Atlantic City, the second episode of Reacher's sophomore season, takes off precisely where the first left off, with Reacher and friends Negley and O'Donnell finding that a second member of their previous squad, Tony Swan, had been killed. Reacher, Negley, and O'Donnell are leaving Swan's house, perplexed as to why the bad people haven't discovered them yet. Reacher and O'Donnell are difficult to contact, and they believe they haven't gotten around to Negley yet. They decide to try again to warn the others, so they phone Sanchez and Orozco. The black Sudan Reacher from the last episode has arrived at Franz's widow's residence. Reacher says he'll introduce himself, then walks up and kicks the front of the car, causing the airbag to deploy in the bald man's face. Reacher head butts and beats the man who comes out of the automobile. Unfortunately for him, the man is Gaetano, Guy, Russo, an NYPD officer. The group takes off in their vehicle. Negley warns Reacher that assumptions kill. Russo turns out to be the officer in charge of the investigation into Franz's death. They ponder leaving town and decide to go to Atlantic City to hunt for Sanchez and Orozco, who are based there. Langston is on the phone with Saropian, who tells him about the events involving Reacher and Russo. Langston instructs Saropian to keep their heads up. Reacher and the gang come upon Carla Dixon, a former member of the 110th who has returned to aid after learning that the organization is looking for her. She was working covertly on a corporate embezzlement investigation. They want her to rent a car using her bogus ID because the others can be tracked. Reacher informs her that Franz and Swan are no longer alive, and that Sanchez and Orozco are disappeared. In the 110th, Reacher and Dixon are discussing a case concerning missing aircraft in Afghanistan. Reacher compliments Dixon's work, she is an expert with numbers. She invites him out for a drink to celebrate, but he says he needs to finish his reports first, but maybe next time. The chemistry between them is palpable. Reacher, Negley, O'Donnell, and Dixon are in the rented car on their way to Atlantic City. Dixon is investigating the case and the information recovered from Franz's flash drive. They suspect it's a vendetta against the 110th. Saropian is on the phone with Langston, who instructs him that when he arrives in Atlantic City, take him out. Saropian informs him that he needs some local talent to back him up, to which Langston agrees, but he demands that they be dead by tomorrow. Atlantic City, New Jersey, the gang inspects Orozco and Sanchez's office, which has been looted. Reacher claims that they are squandering their time here since whomever did this got what they desired. At the Lucky Lounge pub, he purchases a photograph of Sanchez with a lady. They decide to go because it's framed and plainly essential. Reacher and Negley enter the Lucky Lounge, while Dixon and O'Donnell remain outside for protection. They show the bartender the image and disclose that they are Sanchez's buddies. He says he'll send someone out back to show them the books. He then orders a woman in the pub to collect her belongings and leave. This is the woman in the image. The woman runs away. Reacher and Negley are walking to the rear of the pub with a man when he says, this is as far as we're going. Stop messing with our pals, and a brawl ensues. While the battle is going on, O'Donnell and Dixon locate the lady down in the car, and they all cluster around the rear of the Lucky Lounge. They sit down with the woman, and she apologizes, saying she would not have bolted if she had known who they were, and that the other guys were merely watching out for her. She explains that a man had previously came in asking for Sanchez, but he had since gone dark. Franz was working on a case with Sanchez and Orozco, and Swan was also involved. The woman also claims to have heard 650 and 100,000 before he departed. The group at the casino believes it isn't someone with a vendetta. Sanchez and Orozco worked as freelance security for the casino, therefore they believe it had anything to do with gambling. When a waitress approaches, Reacher insists that she send him the casino's director of security right now. The group meets with the security director. He claims he has no reason to assume Sanchez and Orozco are dead because he only saw them last month and asks how he can assist. They ask him if the numbers 650 and 100,000 signify anything to him. He believes it is connected to a $650 million gambling fraud. He offers to comp them a room while he investigates. The gang settles inside the pretty opulent apartment. Dixon is caught card counting at the casino and Reacher tracks her down just as she scores big. Security is upset and gives her concert tickets in exchange for her departure. Reacher assists her with her winning chips, and they leave the table. Saropian is watching the duo from the bar. Reacher and Dixon go for a late night walk and discover they are being watched. Two men are following them, with a vehicle in front of them. 
They flee over a fence, and Saropian, along with the two henchmen, jumps out of the car to pursue them. They approach a warehouse that looks to be under construction. After being wounded by one of the henchmen, Reacher beats him up and pushes him off a cliff. Dixon dispatches the other henchman, but Saropian appears and attempts to shoot her. Before Reacher rushes on Saropian and attacks him, Dixon uses the henchman as a shield. He fractures his leg and drowns his head in a puddle of wet cement. They investigate Saropian's vehicle and discover information on the whole 110th. When they locate his phone, Reacher dials the most recent number. Langston answers the phone and inquires, is it done? He informs Reacher that he's dealing with the wrong man, but Reacher claims that he's the one who sounds terrified. Langston hangs up the phone. Dixon recommends tracking the number, but Reacher believes they were both using burner phones. He believes they should have kept one of them alive in order to get additional information, as they had nothing to go on. Dixon, on the other hand, discovers a parking lot permit belonging to Saropian for New Age Technologies. It's a hint. They bury all three bodies in cement, and Reacher tells Dixon, I'm thirsty. Would you like a beer? Reacher and Dixon are in the hotel room, where he is bandaging his wounds. Reacher attends to Dixon's shrapnel wound once she shows it. They kiss and have sex after she removes her top. A vehicle is traveling over snow in a forested location 20 miles outside of Denver, Colorado. It's the AM alias man, and he meets with a man who claims that all 650 people will be in the truck and that there are two suitable ambush locations along the way, and he needs assurance that the truck driver will not be hurt. AM comforts him, and the man goes away. The following morning in the hotel room Dixon and Reacher explain what happened last night to O'Donnell and Neagley. There's a tap at the door, it's the head of security, he says. Atlantic PD informed him that two other remains had been discovered in upstate New York near where Franz was discovered and had been there for some time. Sanchez and Orozco are there. The wounds match Franz's, and they prove that this is a New York case, not an Atlantic City one. The episode concludes with Reacher saying that he will need additional weapons for the struggle ahead.